Next topic that are we going to discuss about in Green Skills module regarding sustainability are food byproducts. So, in line with sustainability and sustainable development goals, we need to think about different kind of uh, interlinked uh, goals and also different kind of sustainable development indicators. So, we have 17 sustainable development goals, and there is great concern of future trends in environmental protection, food production, health, and uh, different kind of uh, issues. So uh, we need to think about sustainable development indicators and uh, we have uh, different kind of uh, indicators. Uh, we have uh, 102 indicators that are structured along 17 sustainable development goals and each goal has six indicators primarily uh, attributed to it. So we need to think about how to tackle those indicators and how to go in line with sustainable development goals. All indicators are grouped in sub-teams to underline interlinkages and hi highlight different aspects of each SDGs. So when discussing about uh, food production, uh, food chain, uh, we need to think about sustainable consumption and production. So this is uh, 12th, 12th sustainable development goal. And also we need to think about different kind of uh, industrial aspects. So uh, SDG 9 industry innovation and infrastructure and also sustainable cities and communities uh, under responsible consumption and production we need to think about resources and also emissions so we have resources in uh, resource extraction farming processing uh, pro manufacturing processing design of a new product also transportation retail and then we uh, come to emissions like retail, usage, disposal, recycling, reuse, and also energy recovery. Uh, we have different kind of indicators uh, in those uh, sustainable development goals. And also under those uh, SDGs, we have uh, also SDGs like uh, good health and well-being, clean water and sanitation, climate action, life below water and life on land. So we need to think about different kind of impact to the health, different kind of impact to the uh, environment, also to the water, climate change, different kind of uh, impact due to land use, different kind of uh, impact due to resource use, metals, minerals, and also ozone de de depletion. So we need to think about, uh, identify most, most severe risks on a global scale over the next 10 years. Definitely, when discussing about sustainability, there is impact to the environment, economy and society. So we have these most severe risks uh, with uh, climate action failure. So this is the first risk on the global scale. Also then uh, extreme weather, biodiversity loss. And uh, regarding society, social co cohesion erosion, livelihood crisis, infectious disease. So we have different kind of uh, risks in line with environment, economy and society. So we need to think about those risks. When discussing about uh, impact to the environment, we have a vast difference in greenhouse gas uh, that are produced across various food types. So uh, when discussing about food production and food supply chain, we discuss about land use, farm, so animal uh, feeding, so producing uh, feed for animals, then uh, for processing, transport, retail, and then packaging. So we can see that in example, gas emission per kilogram of uh, food product, in example for beef, there is a uh, huge uh, GH, uh, uh, so uh, gas emission. And uh, we have uh, seen that uh, for land use, also there is a huge impact. So we have a huge uh, increase for uh, carbon equivalent for a kilogram of uh, beef product. Uh, also, uh, we have the problem with methane production from uh, cows and also uh, land conversion for, for grassing and also animal feed. Uh, that means beef from dedicated beef herds has a very high carbon footprint. Then, uh, because of that, we need to think about plant-based products. And uh, also we can see that uh, land usage and also usage of uh, farming for, uh, in example, production of rice, then uh, production of uh, olive oil, then production of a different kind of plant-based 
products are lower than production of uh, animal products. Then we go to the sustainable food systems and uh, when discussing about uh, processing, also we need to think about complete production. Sustainable food systems, we need to think about uh, the joint uh, efforts on the societal part, so nurturing communities, then economic path, driving prosperity and also environmental part, preserving the resources. So we need to think about sustainable and healthy diets, access to food and wise food production and distribution. And we have uh, interlinkages of uh, all, all those uh, SDGs. So uh, Japan's vision for sustainable food systems uh, thinks uh, about a uh, different approach. And uh, in my opinion, they are really uh, good in uh, this kind of uh, thinking and solution. Also, they are implementing a way of uh, uh, innovation and uh, combining Industry 4050 and uh, also Society 50. So there is uh, uh, really thinking about decarbonization and resilience with innovation, also reduction of chemical uh, pesticide and chemical fertilizers, promotion of organic farming, reducing of greenhouse gas emissions, so zero uh, CO2 emission in the agriculture, forestry and fisheries sectors by 2050. Uh, there is a vision about sustainable sourcing for raw materials, reduction in food loss and waste, also promoting a balanced diet, enhancing the sustainability, sustainable production systems for fishery products, also promoting innovation from rural areas and also promotion uh, of private investment. So we need to think about implementation of policy approaches in collaboration with the international community, strengthening food supply chain based, uh, based on the rules for the free and fair trade, and also international contribution uh, to improve nutrition, uh, then eradicate poverty and hunger. So there is also a commitment from uh, state stakeholders. Uh, regarding food industry, we need to think about smart industry, smart industry approach, and also we need to think about implementation of green technologies. So we need to think about environment, economy, society, over optimization, digitalization uh, towards smart factories. Key points are circular economy, uh, then to uh, valorize products uh, over to total quality index, quality function deployment, usage of uh, life cycle assessment, waste management, uh, and to think about uh, recycle, reduce, reuse, reuse in order to uh, go towards uh, ecological and uh, economic and environmentally friendly processing. So we need to assure food safety, quality and sustainability. So by means of energy, economy and environment through process, product and waste. So we need to think about waste management and to think about a whole life cycle assessment from raw material to the final product. Uh, then also uh, th when discussing about uh, tackling climate change uh, in uh, EU, we can see that uh, agriculture uh, accounts for around 10% of total greenhouse gas emissions e in EU. So the majority is because of the energy transport uh, and, uh, in example, commercial sectors. Uh, we have uh, two types of greenhouse gas associated with agricultural practices. So methane production and uh, nitrous oxide uh, production from agricultural soil, uh, livestock digestion processes uh, for methane, and then uh, different kind of, in example, uh, even rice cultivation. Then uh, in the EU, the agriculture sector reduces its uh, greenhouse gas emissions by 19% between 1990 and 2017. Emission of methane due to uh, enteric fermentation from the digestive system of cattle fell by 21% over the same period. And also we have different kind of uh, agriculture policy. European uh, commu Commission aims to ensure that agriculture makes a strong, strong contribution to the EU climate uh, policies. So as a part of a European Green Deal, the farm to farm strategy outlines the framework for the tra transition towards sustainable food systems. Uh, so we need to think about pre-production, food-related land use, uh, then production, post-production, diet and consumption, uh, and also we need to think about how to reduce food loss and food waste. Also, we need to think about waste disposal and how to have a better solution uh, in that management. So food system emission uh, by category, as a percentage, uh, we have 33% uh, of total anthropogenic emissions are from food system emissions. Uh, and also we have uh, to think about land, land use. 
then uh, on-farm production, uh, pre- and post-production, and also non-food system uh, emissions. So there is uh, why we need to think about uh, plant uh, products and uh, plant-based uh, diets. So also we need to think about byproducts. So in uh, food industry and also in general and in plant uh, food processing industry, we need to think about potential byproducts and re reusage. Also, we have different kind of documents and uh, we uh, have different kind of uh, books pr uh, on the web. So you can easily find the articles and the books. And uh, we can see uh, that uh, in example, uh, uh, food waste from ho households uh, is really the majority uh, percentage of, of food waste and loss. So it's uh, 53%. There is a need for the uh, utilization of uh, waste produced from the food processing industry. And also we have diverse uh, food uh, byproducts uh, that are rich in antioxidants and bioactive compounds. So therefore we need to valorize these byproducts into cost effective nutritional food materials. And also this is something that is needed and desirable. So there should be focus on the environmental and economic benefits as well as emerging consumer values. So there is a need for food byproduct utilization, product fortification and sustainable product design. So we need to think about design of sustainable food products or materials and also emerging consumer behavior towards more environmentally friendly food alternatives. Uh, fruit and vegetable processing uh, generate byproducts in the form of pomas, seed, uh, pulp, peel or steam. So fruit pro pomace is the byproduct of the juice in example processing, and it may contain a high sugar content. Fruit pomace and peel from various fruits, including apple, citrus, grape, different kind of uh, fruits, uh, they have been studied in extrusion application. And also vegetable byproducts include uh, carrot pomace, tomato pomace, uh, cauliflower, uh, and uh, others. They can be uh, really reduced and reused in uh, developing of uh, different kind of products. Uh, this, those byproducts generally contain high total fiber content and bioactive compounds, including uh, polyphenols, antioxidant compounds and vitamins. And they are also low cost source of bioactive compounds and vitamins and could be incorporated into food products and offer uh, nutraceutical functionality. Also, we can use fibers from those uh, pomaces. Uh, the idea is definitely to implement uh, those uh, byproducts uh, into functional uh, products. Uh, also, we have byproducts of grain milling, include uh, bran, hulk, husk, or pots. And bran uh, contains a high level of insoluble fiber and a significant amount of protein, and in some cases, high amount of fat. So also, we have, uh, uh, in addition to high dietary fiber, beta-glucan, the antioxidant compounds are of interest from the wheat bran. So also we have, on the other hand, rice bran, which is also a good source of dietary fiber and also micronutrients and uh, contains a high content of fat that needs to be defeated, defeated, defeated uh, but also it uh, also contains uh, different kinds of enzymes that needs to be stabilized by heat treatment before further utilization. Uh, so the idea is to use those uh, key components of uh, byproducts. Uh, in developing of uh, functional properties and uh, development of uh, functional food. Uh, we have different kind of uh, projects, different kind of uh, research papers that are discussing uh, the potential uh, application of uh, byproducts from uh, waste and also incorporating of those byproducts in development of new products. So you can easily find uh, these links and uh, find examples on the internet. Also, we have uh, uh, upcycled uh, uh, activity, and uh, the idea is that, uh, in example, different kind of uh, byproducts, in example, fru fruit pomace, all the fibrous uh, bits left after fruit juice production, and uh, this can be used for the flavor and nutritional content of snack food, in example. Uh, also, uh, we can uh, add byproducts from uh, wheat processing to breakfast cereals and also increase the content of vitamin, minerals and fibers. Uh, flour made from uh, the pulp byproducts of soybean and also almond milk production, which is uh, sold as baking mixtures uh, of uh, upcycled flours. And also craft beer that uses uh, surplus unsold bread as a fermentation substrate. So this can be an example how to collect and distribute 
second uh, tier uh, produce before it goes bad. Uh, also, pe pecan shell floor, dried vegetable uh, peels as soup ingredients and also powders made from waste fruit and vegetables can be added to beverages uh, or snack bars. So we have different kind of examples of health benefits, uh, benefits of vegetable and fruit byproducts. In example, antioxidant activity, antimicrobial uh, and antifungal activity, anti-cancer activity, anti-diabetic and different kind of uh, health related um, uh, issues than uh, producing functional foods. And also there is uh, definitely uh, to think about uh, protein enriched foods. Uh, then we have uh, example of uh, SUS food uh, uh, Aranet uh, project that is discussing about sources of proteins and bioactive compounds from agri-food processes that can be uh, used uh, as uh, in example uh, reusage of byproducts, wastes uh, to produce new ingredients and we can uh, in example produce different kind of uh, products that will be uh, rich of uh, proteins and bioactive uh, compounds. So we have added value uh, in th those products. Uh, then also uh, we can think about uh, new product development uh, and uh, also uh, we need to think about how to uh, valorize process through identification of bioactive compounds, quantification, extraction, pu uh, purification and incorporating of uh, those uh, byproducts into the new uh, products. Uh, so we can uh, we can see different kind of examples where different kind of byproducts uh, from uh, fruit and uh, vegetable processing can be incorporated in different kind of uh, uh, products. Uh, also, we have uh, a project uh, that is uh, prolific extraction that is uh, discussing about extraction and realization of proteins and bioactive molecules from legumes, fungi, and coffee agroindustrial side streams. And the idea is to use power ultrasound to improve the protein uh, extraction efficiency from coffee and fungi residues. And also, uh, we ha they have found that protein extraction from biological sources can be achieved by the alkaline acid precip precipitation technique. So uh, this is uh, really important for the upscaling and the identification of processes using a dynamic solution system. So uh, when discussing about food processing, reusage and uh, valorization of byproducts, we need to think about in general lean, green and digitalization towards smart, sustainable and energy efficient processing with low emission technologies. So nowadays we have different uh, uh, sources that can be uh, uh, used uh, in the product development, also different kind of techniques that can be used in product development like uh, additive technologies, so 3D printing. And also we have uh, examples that you can find uh, in terms of uh, research papers, in terms of uh, project, in terms of uh, product development. In example, uh, 3D printed algae that can, uh, can uh, make uh, new products and uh, really sustainable uh, resourcing of algae in pr production of new also, uh, the vision of food in 2050, so uh, bacon grown on blades of grass or bioreactor chicken nuggets. So we can have, uh, we can see uh, different kind of uh, raw material, different kind of uh, matrix that can be used uh, in uh, plant-based alternatives and how to produce alternative meats. Then also we can use uh, innovative uh, technologies and we can use additive technologies in an, an example 3D printing to produce uh, personalized food and um, this uh, food can be produced by 3D printing uh, and would uh, provide food with exactly required proportion of nutrients and vitamins and other biologically important molecules. So we can uh, tackle lack of nutrients uh, that uh, are uh, causing uh, weakness to immune system, causing malnutrition of obesity or obesity. And also we can take the advantage of 3D printing uh, in example in the steps of cooking and food preparation that are skipped. And this uh, reduces the exposure of uh, human body to other substances. In example, if we have a person with uh, some allergic uh, problems. Also by using uh, innovative uh, uh, approaches and also by using uh, byproducts, also we can tackle climate uh, changes and reduce the impact to the environment. 
and uh, usage of uh, 3D printing would significantly change food production worldwide. Agriculture would focus on the production of ingredients used by 3D printers, which would, would have a much lower human impact on the environment and though on climate, and less waste uh, released uh, into ecosystems, and also there will be uh, reduced CO2 emissions. So we have different examples of uh, additive technologies, 3D printers on the market, and especially dedicated to the food systems and to development of uh, food products. Also, what is really important, the packaging. So package, uh, packaging are not uh, something that we need to consider about waste, but the resource of new materials and also that uh, we can produce something afterwards. So we need to produce recyclable packaging and also we need to, to use a technology that can uh, pr uh, produce uh, food safe, uh, safety food. Uh, and also we need to think about how to uh, reuse those packaging material afterwards. afterwards. Also we can uh, efficiently use resources and in example to use uh, something that we can in example uh, eat uh, and not to waste after our meal. Also, we need to valorize uh, food products and also food process and also to think about waste management. Uh, therefore, we need to use life cycle assessment and uh, life cycle assessment calculations. So we have different kind of softwares that can be found on the market. And uh, so we can propose an example SEMA Pro software. And uh, through this software, we can uh, not easily uh, it's really complicated and uh, we need to collect data from raw material to the final product and uh, really it's uh, time consuming and really need to think about the collecting of the data for the each and every step of the food uh, processing. So we need to think about uh, land use, uh, raw uh, material production or food processing or packaging or uh, lifetime, complete lifetime of the product. Um, so we need to think about each and every step and also we are using uh, a life cycle assessment databases to calculate and valorize uh, food processing food products and also uh, to think about waste management uh, so through uh, those uh, softwares we can uh, go uh, across the entire food process uh, and take into account material uh, also for the raw material uh, production, so agriculture, agri-food uh, systems. Uh, then also we can calculate uh, life cycle assessment, in example, for plant production. Uh, then also we need to take into account uh, chemical consumption for the production of final product. Then um, construction of the food systems. Then also different kind of uh, energy usage, transport processing, waste scenario, waste treatment. So we need to take everything into account. Uh, also, we need to think, think about waste management, waste types. We need to define what, what kind of waste are we producing and also a different kind of uh, method and calculation setups to calculate and valorize uh, those food process, food uh, products and uh, waste management. Also, we need to think about land usage and also we need to think about uh, the uh, land usage for the raw material production, also uh, energy, water, waste. So we need to think about how to calculate and valorize something that we are claiming that is sustainable. So for uh, vegan food processing and for vegan food products, we need to think about the uh, whole supply uh, chain. And also we need to think about sustainability and also waste management. So uh, we need to think about uh, the substances uh, that we are using, raw material, different kind of emissions, uh, and also emissions to soil. Then non-material emissions, uh, also we need to think about uh, social uh, issues and also economic issues. So this is really uh, everything that we need to have in mind regarding sustainability. So you can find uh, different kind of tutorials on the internet and uh, different kind of video materials for specific uh, softwares and specific products. These are the example of SEMA Pro and you can uh, find the tutorials on the internet and also you can uh, check uh, some case studies, uh, some uh, solutions and also uh, databases that are included in example uh, life cycle assessment calculations. Uh, also, you have different kind of webinars and you can, in example, uh, find the research, uh, research uh, papers, calculations and also what is behind uh, vegan food production. So there are examples that can be found 
uh, on the in 